So I'm here, I'm back, I'm just looking at my laptop to see if I'm showing to anybody. It looks like there's an advert playing, so you're probably going to all be a few seconds behind me. Let's skip that ad and wait for the next ad. So let's adjust this whilst we wait for things to happen anyone to turn up and say hi if you are watching do give me a wave or say hi or something so that I know you're here and today I'll be talking about a fragrance house hi Elise hi yeah thanks for saying hi today I'll be talking about a fragrance house and they're called Rosa Salas they are a dupe house, so I guess you'd put them in the same ballpark as Perfume Parlour, I think. Uh, hi Johnny, Johnny Legrand, hello there, hi Johnny. Oh, Rosa Salas is actually in the house, so hi Rosa Salas. So Rosa Salas sent me a ton of samples, so obviously we won't have time to smell them all because it's quite a lot. And... I don't have the originals for the majority of them to do any side-by-side -side testing at the moment. I've got two originals to test, but um, that's all I could quickly grab. Uh, Christy, hi Christy, and Scott the Centurion's here as well. Hello Scott. So nice to see some friendly faces. I Sometimes I think, are people going to get sick of these live streams? And I always think, should I give it a break? But I've had these samples for a little while and I wanted to get them out there. And I, it's always fun to do samples on a live, I think. Um, yeah, Christy, ooh, samples, yes. And Tracy's here. Hello, Tracy. If you are watching and you haven't signed in and said hi, you know the rules. Just give us a little wave, a thumbs up, a smiley face. Just let us know that you're here, that you're watching. Katrine's here. Hi, Katrine. And uh, then that's just health and safety covered, you know, tick, tick, sign on the register. Heather's here too. Hi, Heather. Really nice to see all my favourite, favourite frag friends. I was thinking today we need to come up with a name for you all. So that's something maybe to think about, maybe for another live stream, we can um, come up with some kind of, you know, Eugene's got whack pack. We need something. Christy, no, we don't get sick of your live streams, never. Oh, thank you very much. That's good to know. But yeah, I wasn't sure if there anyone, I don't know why, I just got this nervous feeling that no one's gonna come today. Um, Eve's here, hello, I hope everyone is well. Hi Eve, all good here anyway, certainly. I uh, hope you're well too. So yes, we've got some samples to try from Rosa Salo. So they are a dupe house, and I think the fragrances are about the £20 a bottle mark. I can't remember, I did look them up, but it was a while ago. Um, uh, if Rosa Salas want to uh, pipe in with any information, obviously feel free. Um, Johnny Legrand, great streaming. Thank you. I haven't had a break from it because I was on Dan's channel last night. Uh, we streamed for nearly two hours, I think. And then the night before that, I streamed with Hilary from uh, Nerdy Fragrance, the Bureau, Nerdy Fragrance Review. So I've, it's been a night after night after night of streaming. So I'm definitely gonna take tomorrow night off because I kind of fancy just chilling out and maybe finding some kind of device to watch a film on because I don't have a TV. Uh, Rosa Salas, 30 mils is about 24.95, 50 mils 29.85. These are the prices for the uh, bottles of the samples that we're sm smelling today. So. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone scent of the night, please. Let's all let's warm up with a, a scent of the night. Mine is, I've got two on. Up here, I've got Parfums MDCI Sheepra Palatan, which I love. I've only got travel sizes at the moment. Once I run out, I will definitely be getting a full bottle because I absolutely love it. It's a, a fruity labdanum type scent it's absolutely stunning Bertrand du Chiffre is the perfumer and it's one of the very few fragrances I call a masterpiece and I felt like treating myself to a couple of sprays of that tonight and then on my wrist I have Anubis from Papillon Perfumery again I've only got a decant 
once that runs out it's on the buy list and that is a smoky slightly leathery jasmine it's absolutely stunning it smells like egypt kind of like in the same ballpark as dendera by centauri jlw saying hi hi jlw and uh, centurion's wearing bra 1920 classic heather's wearing 1969 histoire de parfum elise is wearing mew mew okay uh, Tracy's wearing Bengal Rouge this evening, a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. So we're all smelling good. We're a bunch of smelly buggers. Uh, Katrine's been wearing Blackberry and Bay in the woods today. So that's, I think that's Joan Malone. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, JLW's wearing Limit 37 by Le Labo. I haven't tried that one. And Christy, remembering New Orleans with bourbon, French perfumery, sweet olive. That's interesting. I've never heard of that one either. Uh, and Heather is enjoying her histoire de parfum. Uh, had several fool me. Had several fail me out of my last order. Oh, okay. So are you sampling it? I take it. And uh, Eves is wearing Santel Majuscule. That's a gorgeous fragrance. And uh, Rosa Salas uh, is wearing Terra from our private collection to come. Ah, oh, interesting. And JLW sampling today as well. Right, okay. So let's get on with smelling some of these samples. So Rosa Salas just mentioned their private collection. So they did send me some marked private collection and we have got Terra here actually so this is the one that Rose Sellers is actually wearing right now but I'm, I'm guessing it's not actually available just yet then from what you're saying I did try I have to be completely honest I did try these private collections I have tried most of them on paper um briefly the private collection ones they, they don't seem to be my style they're kind of very rich oody patchouli kind of heavy scents so let's see what terra is like because it's been a while since i tested them uh and rosa salis is hoping to launch terra late 2020 okay so let's give that a go are you still trading at the moment rosa salis right so that's terra um, and are the private collection uh, dupes for anything or are they your own um, style of fragrance? Are they your own creations? That's what I'm saying. Uh, let me know, let everyone else know. So we'll pop Terra over there. And so that smells like woods and patchouli with a bit of sweetness. Um, actually, it's reminded me a little bit of one of um, the Navitas fragrances. Maybe like a little bit like Absolutio, which is the one that's got the candy floss note. Um, our Rosa Salas, they are still trading, although obviously like everywhere, sales are a little bit down. Uh, they're all created by us. Yeah, so this... This just really reminds me of one of the Navitas ones, but I, I can't remember which one it is. Um, definitely get this sort of almond, candy floss, woods. Definitely got some of those modern molecules like curambroxin. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong with any of this, Rosa Salas. Um, very, very punchy. Definitely feels like there's like a sharp sweetness, ethyl maltol kind of candy floss, hint of almond. Um, uh, we have included all the very best ingredients, says Rosa Salas. Um, yeah, Tracy, it does remind me a little bit of the Absolutio one, which is one of my favourites from the line. But it's got a lot of woodsiness to it. So it's woods, to me, it's woods candy floss with some kind of almond-like essence to it. Um, Heather says Absolutio reminds me of Baccarat 540 had to wash it off yeah Absolutio's got that Efol Molto in it so if it and it's in quite a strong dose so I think if you're not into Baccarat Rouge 540 
which is heavy on the efol mold hole and you're not going to be into absolutio definitely yeah so this sweet almondy woodsy slight sharpness probably a hint of citrus going on just to lighten it up a little bit and that is terra i'm going to try and move on quite quickly because we do have quite a lot and we might as well get through as many as we can so private collection let's go for another one this one's called patch orient so already by the name i'm guessing it's not going to be quite for me because anything with a strong patchouli note anything with patchouli in the title is generally not my cup of tea can be can sometimes be wrong about that and I like, I don't mind patchouli in small doses as a building block in a fragrance, but as a main note, a starring note, it's generally not my style. Um, yeah, so this is called Patch Orient. Um, yeah, that's not my cup of tea. Um, it's hard to explain. It's almost got like a musty feel to it which I kind of like I don't know if there's something animalic in here or it's got that I hate to say it but you know when you wash clothes and then you don't dry them properly and then you get a, a, a scent from them it's reminding me of that for some reason uh, might need time on here but it's a little bit dank and musty, that one. But then patchouli obviously is an earthy ingredient, so. It's got a sweetness to it as well. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit musty for me. So we'll pop that one to the side. What I'm going to do is put the sample with the piece of paper that, co that corresponds to the smell. And we can come back. Oh, drop one. We can come back and check what they're like once a little bit of time has passed um, and so uh, Rosa Salas is listing the ingredients for Terra and there's incense cedar amber caramel on the middle note so caramel that makes sense it's, I'm getting that sort of caramel sugar sugary note from it um, I right, will try another one from here avoid something with patch there's another one called patch oud that's totally not got my name on it <laughs> um not an oud lover so let's try golden right so the other notes for terra vetiver sandalwood musk and oud okay right so golden let's give that one a little sniff down there for a moment how is everyone doing We've all gone very quiet ah so golden's interesting that's fresher golden feels citrusy to a degree feels like it's citrus woods difficult to describe actually but very um it feels a lot very mass appealing um i would guess at uh vetiver it's not too sweet it's it's a it's a bit fresh it feels like there's some citrus element to it and maybe some slight aquatic nature to it yeah, Christy says golden may be nice for spring. Oh, so golden's now been renamed as Lukia. Lukian? Lukian? Is it, um... Mm. But it's, you're saying it's, they're not inspired by anything. So, because Lukian sounds a little bit like La Yuka one. Um, just, um, yeah. Yeah, lemon, bergamot, orange, that makes sense. It does have a citrusy opening. Woodsy, it feels it feels masculine. Doesn't have a lot of sweetness. The only sweetness is coming from the citrus at the moment. Woodsy, 
uh, very easy to wear I would say for most people reminds me a tiny it's quite not it's not like Terre d'Hermes it's not as uh, earthy or as vetivery but if you like Terre d'Hermes which is a citrus woodsy fragrance then you'll probably like this one uh, woody marine and musk in the middle yeah I did I, I felt a little bit of something marine or ac aquatic without it being like isimiyaki in your face aquatic though more like you're smelling a piece of driftwood that's just got a hint of the sea on it um Um, uh, so JLW says marine ambergris or mugwe, typically don't like mugwe. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't get any mugwe is lily of the valley, isn't it? I don't get any of that at all from this. So I'm guessing it's like a ambergris or, um, one of those sort of aquatic sea air type notes. It's got coumarin, musk and amber in the base. Okay, so coumarin would smell sort of slightly hay-like, slightly tonka-like. Um, so that might come through a little bit later or it might be lending it just a hint of sweetness. But for now, yeah, it is, it's musky and woodsy with that citrus and sort of a bit marine-like, but only in a very subtle way which is how I prefer an aquatic or a marine like note. It definitely feels very mainstream men's designer. So that one was Golden aka now called Lucian. So we'll pop that one there. Sweetie's just there and she's just doing that thing. Aren't you sweetie? I think she's going to try and get on the chair behind me because that's what she does. So um, we'll pick uh, one more from the private collection. I'm gonna leave the oud one alone and we'll go for dark opium. <laughs> yeah, sweet is here. Uh, let's go with dark opium then. Uh, um, they've sent me all the notes for the private collection on Instagram. Okay, I can't. Um, I don't think I can access it right now, but this is um, it's just a quick kind of first impressions and I will do a more in-depth like pre-recorded video once I've had a little bit more time and then I can include the actual notes. So this is Dark Opium. So that's a lot sweeter. Um, so that smells very much like a mainstream female designer fragrance. Um, probably it's, it's similar to, I would imagine, Black Opium. Um, yeah, uh, inspired by Yves Saint Laurent, Dark Opium. Yeah, it's got that sweet orange blossom, sugar. I've never got coffee from Black Opium, but that is apparently in there. Um, and yeah, this is almost... It's almost an almond-like orange blossom and a fresh, fresh with some sort of orangey citrus as well. Scott, I like the sound of the private collection. Yeah, that's really pretty. Definitely a white floral, female designer kind of fragrance going out, very party, pretty, sweet sugary yeah so that one they've said is inspired by uh, Yves Saint Laurent's Black Opium which is a very nice uh, pretty flirty female fragrance so we'll pop that one down and let's move on to let's just randomly pick up a baggie and let's see what we've got spring flower Spring flower then, let's see. So everyone's very quiet today. I don't know if you're in a sombre mood or if you're just chilling out. I'm in a little bit of a sombre mood, I've got to be honest with you. I haven't been out today, the weather wasn't very nice, so I didn't go for my walk. And I feel like I kind of wasted the day 
Uh, I made some nice food for my dinner. I had a long bath. You know, I've had a nice day and I've been singing along to Alexa. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna light up. Um, but um, yeah, the weather wasn't very nice. It kept me in. And I think that it's kind of like brought my mood down a little bit. Um, right, so this one's inspired by Flower Bomb. It's really handy actually having Rosa Salas here in the chat because the safe safe um guessing what they might be uh jlw is actually doing sit-ups while listening just got back from a run okay well done you that's another thing i think i've I, i've overeaten again so i was good for a couple of days and then today i've been a bit naughty and I, it makes me feel bad it brings me down a little bit so i feel like I, my tummy gets bigger and i feel like oh shouldn't have eaten whatever it was what did i have apple pie Apple crumble and ice cream. That was lunch, but still, um, yeah, it makes me feel a bit sluggish and horrible and I've not walked. So I don't want to come out of this hibernation a big fat whale, you know? Yeah, this is pretty. This this feels like Lily. Um, I don't think Flower Bomb, Flower Bomb is about Lily, but this is um, very, fresh spring lily type fragrance very much a flower pollen you know um christy says yay spring um heather says it got colder today scott says no john dan spanos or jim no they're all missing let's hope they can pop in at some point um yeah we are missing a lot of our usual crew no rich either um, I don't know if maybe someone else is live streaming. I did have a look. Pete has finished his live stream, but maybe someone else is doing a live stream. So that's why we're a bit thin on the ground. Um, uh, Katrine's doing the dishes. Uh, Christy says, tomorrow is a new day. You are so right. We have to take this day by day. And if we can't take it day by day, let's take it hour by hour. And yeah, I'm okay. It just It's just been a bit like, a mm, bit low energy. So tomorrow, as you say, is a new day, hopefully better weather, get myself out, get walking and try not to put too much chocolate in my face. <laughs> um, JLW, I hear you, apple crumble, I've been eating a lot. Yeah, a lot of people have, my I've been talking to my friends, we all, I think we're all doing the same, comfort eating. Um, hey Hilary, Hilary's in the house, the Bureau Nerdy Fragrance Reviews um uh with our twist a few slight ingredients so rosa salas are saying this one then the flower bomb dupe is which is called spring flower it's got their own twist on it so it's kind of inspired by flower bomb but it's with their own twist yeah it definitely feels it's almost like uh lilies and narcissus it's a quite um sharp green floral not as sweet as flower bomb certainly at the moment anyway yeah, very fresh, very spring-like, that one. So let's keep moving because we've got loads to smell. Uh, so everyone's greeting Hillary. What a lovely community we are, I think. I'm sure you all agree. That's why you're here. And that's why I'm saying we should come up with a name for us all. Um, but I don't know what. I don't, don't know what. So the next one we're doing, sorry, I need to say it, Sin. So the way that these are labelled is they have, all have a number, a corresponding number, so you can find them on their website quite easily. Uh, so this one's called Sin and it's number 409. Um, okay, that's interesting. Um, I think it's a female fragrance. It's kind of rich, um, a bit fruity, not as floral as the last two. It's m not musky, but like the effect of a lotion, that kind of creamy, it's creamy, inspired by Armani C. See, I always thought, and I'm not an expert with this, but I always thought Armani C and Black Opium were similar in some ways. I don't know if they're both orange blossom based fragrances, but um, this is very different to the Black Opium inspired one. I think I prefer this one. It's less sweet. It's almost more like a Chanel type fragrance. 
it feels kind of fruity and floral but in a very creamy and smooth way like more like a magnolia flower rather than um, a bright orange flower or jasmine it's getting sweeter though there's like more a bit more sugariness coming through now uh, oh robert crawford hi robert you sent me a few things today sorry i didn't reply but um the sales of just a bit um bit of a sort of slow day for me um and if you're smurfy girly there or blue a lot of us have cats too I'm not sure <laughs> what that's in response to. Um, JLW says, C is nice. I've been thinking I need a green scent like mint, anise or green florals. I might get the floral sample you just tried. Okay, yeah. Um, this one is called Sin, Christy. Sin 409 and it's the, uh, <laughs> the Armani C one. Yeah, so... This is changing. I, I prefer this one. I think this is probably my favourite so far. It feels like it's got some kind of citruses going on. But it's not too sweet. That's why I like it, I think. It's not too sweet. It, it feels feminine. It feels like a fruity floral, but it's kind of under... There's an underlying, maybe like a woodsy cedar or something that's stopping it being too sweet. And definitely feels a touch citrusy. So that's really nice. That's Sin 409. Let's pick another one. This is kind of fun. It's like, almost like picking out sweets. Now I remember this one. Morpheus is definitely their angel interpretation. And I do, not angel, alien. Um, so Morpheus 418 is their alien dupe. Um, and I certainly, as soon as I smelt this one, I didn't have to look it up. It's quite clear that it's an alien interpretation. But I do have, now this is vintage. I have a vintage sample of alien here. So, yeah, I mean, I can smell that in the air. It's strong like alien is. And if someone just sprayed that and said it's, well, they wouldn't have to say anything. I would say, oh, you just sprayed alien. So they're certainly, they're certainly on the, um, when it comes to the top notes, that definitely smells like Alien. But I think we should test it against a Alien. But bear in mind, this is really old, vintage Alien. Uh, found at a boot fair in France many, many years ago. So <laughs> I've just kept hold of it. So that's the real Alien. And they really, they, I really couldn't tell, at the moment, I couldn't tell the difference. So they've certainly got the top notes right. So I think what I'm going to do is lay those on the keyboard in front of me. That one, the one in my right hand is Morpheus and the one in my left hand is Alien. I'm going to pop those down and we'll come back to those in a little bit and see if, uh, if it still remains true. So let's go for another one in the meantime. Uh, everyone saying hi to Robert. Um, Tiamo, Tiamo, and that is 410. 410, Tiamo. I think that means my love in, in Italian or Spanish or my friend. Um, I'm not sure what this one is a dupe of. If um... oh, so this is Jador Touche, and that's right, Tracy. Robert, what's your scent of the day? Do share. If anyone else is watching and they haven't signed in, don't forget. You know the rules. We do need you to sign in, even if it's just a little thumbs up or a smiley face. Let us know you're here, and we can say hi to you. Um, it's Shador Touche. Tiamo means I love you. So I've, I wasn't sure who you were talking to then, Rosa Salas, but I've just realised what you mean. Tiamo means I love you. Um, and it's the dupe for Shador Touche. And this is another pretty kind of white floral, 
a little bit sharp and fresh. JLW, I love you too, Rosa Salas. <laughs> oh, let's all get lovey. This is pretty powdery, almost like makeup powdery. Um, it reminds me a little bit of Poudre de Riz from uh, SP Parfums, actually, a little bit. So I'm going to hazard a guess there's some rose in here. Um, maybe rose and jasmine. It's definitely um, pretty florals, a bit powdery. Quite nice, I like that. <laughs> JLW wink. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice one as well. I like that one. J'adore Touche. Um, yeah, J'adore Touche, aka Tiamo. So let's settle set that one down and we'll see how that one fares in just a moment. One more from this bag then. And it's 13 Salas. It's just called 13 Salas. So let's see how that one goes. Bestseller for eight months. Is that the um, Tiamo one, Rosa Salas? I'm, I'm guessing it probably is. It is really nice. Um, oh my gosh. Right, this is Baccarat Rouge vibes all over it. Um, our number 13. That's your bestseller. This is super strong and it's filled the air with Baccarat Rouge. Uh, tell me, uh, Rosa Salas, is that what it's intending to be? Massively, it's the candy floss kind of burnt sugar smell with some sort of orangey citruses. Yeah. Yeah, absolute Baccarat Rouge vibes. I do have a, a sample of that somewhere. So... What I'll do is when I do my pre-recorded video, I will get that out and we'll do some side by sides. So I'll what the ones I have got the originals for, I'll do some side by sides in another video that will come. But this is obviously just a bit of um, of a fun, quick um, say quick. It's not going to be quick. It's going to be quite long and drawn out. But this is just a fun live stream and I'll do something a bit more in depth uh, in once I've had a little bit more time. But yeah. It's absolutely given me Baccarat Rouge vibes straight up. Rosa Salas says it comes from the supplier of Roger Tuff. <laughs> but shush. Okay, yeah, that's absolutely, certainly smelling like it's supposed to. So um, there we go. We've got another packet Then I'm going to open up. Uh, Pluie de Fleurs. So that's 402 Pluie de Fleurs. I'm going to get a little bit messy around here if I try and keep track of everything. Um, Valadina's going to check out fragrances after the live. So, Pluie de Fleurs, so I think that means rain on flowers or rain of flowers. So, let's see how that one goes. Robert Crawford, my scent of today is a feminine one as I got about 30 mils of Tom Ford Violet Blonde from 2011. I got as a swap this week on my arms, etc. It's London by Gallivant. I'm hoping to winch myself. I'm so in love with smell. <laughs> yeah, a Violet Blonde, that's hard to come by now. I used to have a bottle and I didn't really get on with it. It was a bit too loud for me, so I ended up selling it. But that was before it was discontinued. Had I kept it, it would be worth a lot more now. Okay, so this is Pluie de Fleurs. Is a clean floral. Is it um, maybe Chloe? Is it a Chloe dupe? Pluie de Fleurs, Rosa Salas. Um, very clean floral, white floral, maybe rose. Can't quite think what it is. I don't know if it's Chloe or Miss Dior. It's one of those, um, one of those brands, you know, like, um, yeah, Chloe or Dior, um, clean white floral, hard, hard really for me to, to find a way to describe it. I mean, 
it's a touch sort of sharp maybe a hint of citrus but definitely um quite floral bergamot mandarin you've got floral explosion of some some back jasmine freesia rose and osmanthus okay it's pretty it's definitely pretty it's a yeah it doesn't have any of that sugar or caramel kind of thing that, that you get in a lot of uh, modern designer fragrances so it feels more classic still quite sort of young and fresh though yeah so that's quite nice um Pluie de fleurs let's see what else we've got 414 chocolate mist now i think this one was the um is it chanel mademoiselle i think jw to ship to the us rosa salus question uh dan spanos is here dan we were just wondering about you hi claire everyone else i just got a bottle of black orchid edp in today and i'm wearing that i'm actually loving it lovely well done that sounds really nice um yeah, it's quite a strong one, Black. It's funny, that we are just talking about um, Tom Ford. Robert's wearing Violet Blonde. You're now wearing Black Orchid. Robert, I like London by Gallivan very much. More feminine, but I put it off. But the two are from my mum, though. I really like Violet Blonde. Yeah, they're all good. All good. And everyone's saying hi to Dan. Dan, good to see you. And Chocolate Miss is the scent that we're trying now. Chocolate Miss. And I think this was the Coco Mademoiselle one. However, I will know once I sprayed it. And when I tried it before, if, it, if, if it's this the one I think it is, it was pretty good, certainly in the top notes, just like the Alien one is. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah, this one does remind me of Coco Mademoiselle. Um, let me just pop that one there. And I've actually got Coco Mademoiselle here. I need a decant. Um, uh, I've got samples everywhere. I've got bits of paper everywhere. <laughs> here we go. Right. Oh. Dan, how are you coping on your own? Are you doing all right? You're keeping out of um, keeping out of the way, staying in, I hope. So let's just double check. Yeah. I'd say the Rose of Salus is similar. I, I'm not sure, Chocolate Mist is, is it supposed to be Coco Mademoiselle, a dupe? I feel like it is. Um, but it's not spot on, there are differences. Um, it's almost like a celery note in Chocolate Mist. Um, not too strong, it's almost reminding me, actually, it reminds me a little bit of... Um, Sculpture, Nikos Sculpture, which is a spicy floral that I used to wear many, many years ago. Um, yes, it is. So, uh, this needs to dry off a little bit. I think I'm getting a bit overwhelmed, if I'm honest with you. My nose is really overwhelmed now. I should have opened a window. Uh, yeah, you can... You get the patchouli, which does give it quite a kind of chocolatey feel. There is something in here that is slightly celery-like, which gives it a savoury feel. And it's floral and citrusy. I'd say the original Chanel is coming off sweeter. So we'll pop those side by side inside the Alien ones. So chocolate miss on the left the Chanel on the right. Uh, Robert says, did everybody go to the pages Claire was talking about called lockdown, etc. It's been great for the last 12 hours, all the different. Yes, yeah, so on Facebook, it's a really fantastic group and it's called 
rock the lockdown or rock the lock, rock the lockdown. And you have every, uh, every half an hour that, or there's different artists of just performing from their living rooms or their bedrooms, performing their own, all different genres of music. And it's absolutely fantastic. Keep you entertained all afternoon into the evenings. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, Bernardina, I just got Tiri Migra's Aura. I don't like the opening, but after 30 minutes, spectacular. Yeah, that's an unusual one. I get a bit of mushroom in the opening of Aura. I really want to try the Sensuel version, but um, I haven't done so far. I think you can only get that directly off of the website now. You can't find it in shops. Um, uh, hi, Dave, db 70s here. Everyone give db 70 a little wave. Um, hope you're all doing well. Um, Christy, looking forward to your side-by-side -side reviews of some of these. Thank you. And JLW, very cool. I love all the live music. DJ D Nice on Instagram has been awesome. Yes, I totally recommend it. Rock the Lockdown on Facebook. It's a massive group now. It, like People are sharing all the different artists. And you just, all the great artists that should be out in the pubs and the clubs and and whatnot so they should be out performing and earning money bless them they're all stuck indoors and so it's great for them and it's great for their social media at least and it's great for us to watch and enjoy so right i'm just going to go back to the alien uh ones so that is the morpheus from rosa salas still smells very much like alien and the alien smells like alien funnily enough yeah, I couldn't tell them apart. Well, you might there might be ever so slightly subtle differences, but not enough that my nose can pick up on. And then and the Chanel, not as close. Yeah, I, I have to be completely honest. I don't think the Coco Mademoiselle one is that great, in my opinion. It's just got this slightly off celery-ish note in there that I can't quite I can't quite get but yeah and it's not as sweet as Coco Mademoiselle it's pretty close it's a close it's close-ish and if someone was wearing that I'd probably just assume I would I would definitely assume they were wearing Coco Mademoiselle but it's just it's just slightly off to my nose that's that's all um right Okay, let's move on to another one. And this is called Madame Dios. And it's 407 Madame Dios. Heather. Um, it smells great on my son. Oh, I think you're talking amongst yourself. So I won't try and catch up because then I'll lose, I'll lose the plot. So let's find another strip. And we are going for... My ripped up pieces of notebook are my strips here. Oh, and actually I should have used, Rosa Salas did send me some nice little cards. I should have used those, but I'll use those in my video, my pre-recorded video that I'm gonna do. Madame Dios 407. Here we go. Oh, JLW's got to go. Um, need to take a shower. Went for a run a bit ago. Oh, stop showing off about all your exercising. <laughs> Making me feel worse. Everyone take care. Digital hugs. That's lovely. Bye, JOW. We'll see you very, very soon. So 407, Madame Dios here now. Ah, oh, um. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. That's okay. Everyone's saying goodbye to JOW. Well, this is interesting. It's not familiar, so I don't know, I can't tell you what I think it is. Um, it's a cinnamon. I think I smell cinnamon. Oh, it's Miss Dior, inspired by Miss Dior. It smells, um, it smells like cinnamon, which I don't think is in Miss Dior, but it smells like cinnamon and sort of like sweet sweet spices I could almost like a cinnamon cookie yeah that's really strange because I didn't think Miss Dior smelt like that but 
I don't have it to compare it, but this to me definitely smells like cinnamon, a spicy biscuit, or if you're in the States, a spicy cookie. Spicy sweet cookie. Yeah, so that's Madame Dios, and that is their dupe of Miss Dior. So we'll pop that one down here and try another one. Uh, Rosa Salas, we do our own interpretation and never to smell exactly the same due to copyright. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, Robert, Heather, can I be your best pal and have one? Uh, what's Heather got? A few more Cadbury mini eggs. <laughs> oh, I love mini eggs. Mm. Yeah, they're so good. But whatever whatever size packet you buy, you've got to eat them all. It's like there's no stopping. Once you've, once you've opened that packet, they've all got to go in your mouth. That's my experience. Right then, so we've got here Rosa Paul L. Rosa Paul L, number 412. So let's see what that's all about. <laughs> um, it's not anything I'm immediately familiar with. It's, oh, it's inspired by Gucci for her, and that's not one I'm very familiar with. Um, it's, uh, Christy, is your nose overwhelmed, Claire? I could never smell as many frags as you can. I need more practice. Now, I think it does get slightly overwhelmed, um, but, you know, yeah, don't take what I say here too seriously. It's just very much first impressions based on an overwhelmed nose now but yeah I would struggle to say what's in here it's not as sweet as a lot of the other fragrances it's kind of woody and balmy almost like a bamboo or papyrus you know like yeah papery woody with a floral but not an overwhelming floral and no added sugar, no mega, nothing mega sweet, no caramel. Um, Rosa Salas, your nose seems better than mine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's very balmy. So I'd say it's a balsamic, woody papyrus with just a hint of floral, maybe a touch of, maybe a touch of pepper or something. Rosa Salas would have needed the coffee beans by now. <laughs> oh, John Snow's here. Hi, John. We were wondering where you were as well. Um, yeah, this is really nice. It's very calming, very comforting, very smooth. Not exactly um, obviously female fragrance either. Um, Robert's saying he's in Bonnie, Scotland. Dave, not very good at rationing chocolate. No. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is actually this is actually quite nice. It's very smooth, very calming, non-sweet fragrance. Kind of like it's almost like oops, I dropped a I dropped her sample. Yeah, it's it's not your typical female fragrance at all. Very nice, very interesting, very different. That's the uh, Rosa Paul L based on Gucci Paul L. I think that was what we said. Now, I don't know what I just dropped down here. Oh, um, it's chocolate mist, so we can pop that over there out of the way. And I have more. If you guys can handle it, I've got more. Let's see if my nose can handle it as well. We've got uh, another four fragrances to get through. So we might as well just do them all now. Uh, John Snow had a bad night last night. Hey, everyone. Oh, what happened, John? Are you, are you okay? Um... Right, let's go with Bon Voyage, which is 404. So Bon Voyage, I might run out of paper strips soon. Um, I'll cut these in half. Um, Rosa Salad, you're hardcore, Claire. <laughs> I'll sniff all day, I'm fine. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Eve hopped off for a bit, had to cook lunch. That's fine, Eve. Thank you for checking back in. Um, Robert Crawford's going to come in his private jet. Well, as long as you clean up after yourself, Robert, that's fine. Um, this one's inspired by Bon Bon. So Bon Voyage. Did you hear Sweetie snort, uh, snorting? Sneezing then. This is inspired by Bon Bon. Uh, let's have a go. Uh, head down the loo was thinking a bug but impossible to get isolating so maybe my cooking oh dear are you, are you feeling better John uh, okay so yes this is a sweet citrus I take mostly citrus in the opening with sugar fruity sugar Definitely, I'm not mega familiar with bonbon. I have smelt it in shops, but I've never owned it. I've never had a sample. Um, Robert, oh Claire, the double meaning you're worse than me. I know. Oh, it's a bit woozy, John. Oh, I hope you feel better soon, John. Yeah, this is a sugary fruit concoction at the moment, bonbon. Pretty nice actually. It's definitely a young fragrance. It's kind of a girly fragrance. But it's kind of a syrupy fruitiness rather than a fresh fruit. It's very syrupy. And a little bit spicy, maybe? A little, just a tiny bit of heat without it being a necessary spicy. It's quite a hot fragrance. Hot, fruity, syrupy, sugary fragrance. Heather, I have every intention to travel to the UK after my son's graduation, which was supposed to be this May. Oh, uh, Robert, John and I put the world to rights this afternoon, did you? Okay, probably feel better for that then. Um, Dan, I have the same symptoms when I cook, John. Oh, my cooking, I don't usually cause illnesses. I just overcook everything and it all, it's all burnt and dry. Yeah. That's probably why I'm not really marriage material. That's probably why I'm still single. Can't cook. So yeah, Bon Bon, uh, uh, du uh, Bon Voyage. It's actually quite nice, fruity, sugary fragrance. So we're going to move on to another one. And this is called uh, 405 L'Amour et Beau. L'Amour et Beau. I wonder if anyone can guess what that might be. Yeah, L'Amour, so love is beautiful i'm guessing then it's la vie est belle like uh, the beautiful life uh, uh heather well dan i can hop into my civic no job now robert you can stay with me heather i've got an extra room <laughs> Okay, right, so let's have a sniff of this. It's uh, L'Amour et Beau, and it's inspired by La Vie et Belle, as you would probably imagine. This one, yeah, I can see it has got that kind of irisy hint to it. And it's definitely got the sweet floral element to it. I can see how it's inspired by it, but it isn't, it isn't, because my friend wears this as her signature scent, so I'm quite familiar with it from smelling it on other people. I've never owned it. And if she was wearing this, I'm not sure I would be 100% sure she was wearing La Vie Belle. I would think, is she wearing La Vie Belle? So it is definitely one of those that's, as they, as they say themselves, it's not supposed to be spot on. It's their interpretation. And probably a case of if you like La Vie Belle, you're probably going to like this, but it is a little bit different. It's, it's got a hint of citrus in the opening, probably just a bit of bergamot or something. It's got that iris and it's got the white floral element, which I think is orange blossom. It does feel a bit orangey and I would hazard a guess there's patchouli in here. In fact, I'm pretty, pretty confident I smell patchouli as a base note, as a um, part of the fragrance. Yeah, it's quite nice actually. Maybe a bit, maybe the patchouli is not, not my thing. 
but it's quite nice. So that one is L'Amour et Beau, and that is 405. Let's see then, what have we got? We've got two more left. Um, Uh, John's asking if I've tried Forest Mist. No, I don't have that one. Um, and Rose says Alice says that's John's signature scent. Um, just having a quick look through the comments. Um, John Snow, any cake is better than my baking. Okay. Elise can order food really good. I'm good at that too, actually. I'm very good at ordering food. Uh, Ka Katrine has to go. Bye, Katrine. Um, and Dan, speaking of food, I've got to eat dinner. I'll pop back in when I'm done, if you're still on. Okay, Dan, see you later. Enjoy. Take care. Right then, let's smell something else. Uh, this one's called Lady Rika, and it's number... 406 Lady Rika and so Rosa Salas says regarding the last one which is the La Vie et Belle Duke Iris is the overall charm of this blissful fragrance that can truly brighten up your day at the centre of L'Amour et Beau lies the scent of patchouli that adds depth followed with a trail of sweet yes absolutely get all of that 100% get the Iris and I like it when I can get the iris because iris is a great note. Right then, so we have here Lady Rika and it's a 406. Okay, this is not my cup of tea in terms of fragrances. It feels a bit lily like um, it's green, it's a green spring floral, maybe magnolia. I'm not sure, but it's it's a white floral that's not sweet. Um, so it's it feels almost like a narcissus, lily, uh, magnolia. Very clean. A little bit like pure poison from Dior, actually. It's that clean, crisp, cold, non-sweet white floral. Um... Entwined flowery garden fresh and sweet accords fragrance has playful aspects truly dazzling top notes of bitter orange fleshy raspberry and neroli followed by floral notes orange blossom arabian jasmine base notes of patchouli and honey is that the la vie a bell one you're talking about rosa um or could it be this it is a bit this is a bit honeyed actually it's a honeyed floral Yes, almost like a, yeah, okay, no, the later one, yeah, um, yeah, almost like a honeysuckle kind of scent. It's definitely sweetening, sweetening up now. It's very clean, very crisp, but slightly honeyed floral. It's not sweet as in sugar, caramel, vanilla, the usual things that go into the typical designer fragrances. Is sweet in the honeyed floral aspect, like it's coming from honeysuckle or one of those those like honey floral type fragrances. Um, yeah, it smells it smells like uh, the kind of bush in the garden that all the bees are around. Hyacinth, hyacinth, buddleia, those kind of fragrances. So it's green and floral and honeyed. So that one is Lady Rika. Let's see then, I think we've got one more left. And then I can maybe revisit all the test strips if you would like me to. Uh, last one then is 408 Fee Sauvage. Fee Sauvage, that means like wild girl. So I think then this must be the good girl or bad good girl gone bad or something <laughs> probably haven't quite got that right um i'm sure rosa salas will tell me fee sauvage and it is 408 
Yeah, so that is almost like Coca-Cola. Now I know I smelt this before and I don't remember it smelling like this. But it does remind me of like Dr. Pepper actually. So it's more fruity than Coca-Cola. It's like Dr. Pepper. <laughs> Or some no, it's reminding me of something else. You're right, sweetie. She's looking out the window. There's something out there. Um, this is reminding me. Oh, I tell you what, it reminds me of Jubilee from the Body Shop. <laughs> yes, that's what it reminds me of. So it's fruity, but in a completely entirely different way to anything else that we smelt here today. And it does remind me of Jubilee. From the body shop and I haven't smelt that since I was a teenager so we are going back a good two or three years maybe a little bit more than that um but it's got that kind of rich purple fruitiness it's quite interesting my um, my guess is maybe there's like a plum plum or plum blossom And now I can't get Jubilee out of my head. <laughs> it's a bit powdery. It's a rich purple fruity floral. Christy remembers Jubilee. Yeah, I wore it for a little while and everyone was wearing it and then it got, anno it got annoying and I didn't want to smell like everybody else. So I moved on to white musk. So I was quite, um, quite sophisticated. <laughs> But yeah, now I've got Jubilee in my head. When I smell it, it reminds me of that. So it's like powdery, almost incense -y. You know, like unlit incense. It's like that powderiness that you get from it. And it's, like, it's sweet, but the sweetness is coming from the fruit, the, the purple fruitiness of it. And I can smell underlying maybe a little bit of ambroxan or something. But that's really interesting. So yeah, I don't really know too much about that. I, I thought with the name Fee Sauvage, I thought that was going to be a good girl, uh, maybe good girl or a good girl flanker. But I'm pretty sure good girl is more floral than this. And Christy moved on to the land of hard stuff, poison. Wow, bloody hell. Yeah, my mum was my mum wore poison for a little while and I definitely have very distinct memories of it, but it wasn't for me at that time, although I really loved that bottle that I've got now, vintage poison. Right, this one has top notes of jasmine, may rose and osmanthus, followed by daffodils and tuberose, and a hint of cedar and amber. The main accords of these beautiful uh, fragrances inspired by Good Girl. Yeah, that's weird how I'm getting this purple fruity thing. But it's not, yeah, I mean, it's it's quite, it's quite nice. It's quite unusual. But I am definitely overwhelmed now. <laughs> so maybe my nose is now officially broken. Uh, floral and woods at the base. Yeah, I can, I can smell the underlying woodsiness coming through, but the top is... Oh, it's... It? itching <laughs> I think I've overdone it now luckily that was it that's that's all of them done so I'm gonna just quickly go back and just re-sniff the ones that I've already sprayed just to see where we're at so um, which one is so the alien alien and alien dupe Still really, really close. So I'd say they've really done that so far very well based on on the test strip. Yeah, I can't really tell a difference. So the Morpheus one is that's the alien dupe. That's definitely uh, really close. And then we'll do the Chanel Coco Mademoiselle. Yeah, um, I still feel like I'm getting a bit of celery in that. So 
sorry, I've cat hair on my lip. Um, I'm not feeling that one, I've got to be honest. It's, it is really close, but there's something slightly amiss in here that I just I just don't feel um, compared, to, well, not just comparing it to the original, but even on its own, taking away from whether it's supposed to smell like anything else. I just don't like the one particular slightly savoury note that reminds me of celery for some reason. Uh, so that's those. Uh, Christy, you did it. You win the award for most sample smells live ever. I know. <laughs> it's, it is, it's a bit overwhelming. It's a bit much. Um, right, let's then just re-sniff uh, Tiamo. Tiamo. That's really pretty. Very feminine. It kind of, now it smells clean, white florals, a bit powdery, a bit musky. That's nice. Very, a bit soapy as well, Tiamo. I'm just gonna throw these now because um, it's gonna, um, I'm not gonna come back to them because it's gonna get too much, but Tiamo, very clean, very powdery, white floral, soapy, very nice. Um, eat, grab and go kind of fragrance, uh, interviews, work, um, any any occasion really you're gonna smell good uh, what have we got here uh, is that that one uh so this is 13 it's just called salus still smells like baccarat rouge so it smells like candy floss and an undertone of woodsiness that's kind of um that's kind of that a salus says your nose rose of salus your nose is amazing <laughs> thank you <laughs> and then we have uh, 402 Pluie de Fleurs. Yeah, that definitely smelled. I can't remember. Was that? No, I can't remember which one that was now. But um, does smell like a designer female fragrance. A little bit syrupy, a little bit of sweetness. Definitely some florals. Quite a familiar scent. So... Um, yeah, I can't remember which one it was now, but it is nice anyway. If uh, it's a bit, maybe a bit of caramel. Uh, so that's Bluey de Fleurs, kind of um, losing the, the plot a little bit. 411 Spring Flowers. So this was the one that to me smelled a little bit green and fresh floral. Um, so the last one was Flower Bomb. Okay. Yeah, this still very much smells very spring like. Uh, sort of um, powdery white flowers. This is a little bit like Dior poison, actually. Pure poison, sorry, pure poison. Very clean, almost clinically clean, white floral. Verging a little bit on a lily sort of air freshener kind of thing. Powdery like air fresheners can be, you know, from the can. Powdery white white floral but not a uh, sweet floral so more like a, a lily type scent so this is gucci flower bloom uh so that's spring flower and then we're going back to 412 rose pour l this i think was the gucci pour her i think yeah um this is nice musky. The one that I said smelled a bit like papyrus or um, bamboo or something. Very smooth still, very balmy. Gucci for her, this one. It's a dupe of. Yeah, I like that one. It's really calming. It's a really easy scent to smell. There's nothing sharp. There's nothing bright, like bright, fresh, zesty. It's really smooth probably got a bit of patchouli in there as well but it is it's really smooth it's very everything's splintered very smoothly together in a balmy kind of way um, so throw that over there pop that over there and let's go with this one which is 405 l'amour et beau so this is la vie et belle this is a bit too sweet for my taste but la vie et belle is also a bit too sweet Slightly sharp on the florals, 
and the patchouli feels quite noticeable. So it's not quite my cup of tea. I, I prefer La Via Belle probably a fair bit more, but it's not bad. And I think um, for the price, it's absolutely fine. You're gonna smell good. It's just not quite my taste. I think that patchouli is just a bit too dominant and the flowers a little bit too sharp and just it's just a touch too sweet for me. Um, however, yeah, uh, it does smell good. You know, you know, you're not going to get an argument if you if you bought it as a present for a younger lady. Um, I think they'll be quite happy. So, Lady Rika. I've forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten what it is. And I'm not quite sure how to describe it anymore. It's kind of like, did I just talk about this one? No, I didn't. Did I? This one's very smooth. This is another smooth one. Smooth and creamy and non-sweet again. With a touch of a floral, almost like the in, inside of a flower, like the stamen of a flower. Again, it kind of feels a bit lily-like, but I don't know if, I'm, if my nose is absolutely dead. But <laughs> that's Lady Rika. I'll pop that over there. Let's go for Terra. So this is the first one we smell. Yeah, this, this smells really familiar. Um, the sweetness has gone away. So this is the one that had the... Um, the kind of, it reminded me of Navitas Absolutio a little bit. This does smell quite a lot like this. I'm guessing there's Amber Max, Ambroxin, maybe Isoe Super. It feels like it's quite a lot of modern synthetic molecules that are in a lot of men's fragrances like Sauvage, etc. So for that reason, it's not my cup of tea. Um, it's still got some of the sweetness, but it's dried down, the sweetness is calmed right down and it's very woody, very dry, very, almost like sawdust. Um, but I think if you like modern men's fragrances, then you might like that. But it started out not that masculine because it was quite sweet. Now it's very masculine and it does remind me a little bit of the dry down of Sauvage. And 416 Dark Opium, so this is of course the Black Opium one. Very sweet, very, very sweet orange blossom. And a bit almondy actually, uh, a little, maybe like a bit of heliotrope in here. Almost like hypnotic poison. But a bit too sweet for my taste, but then so is Yves Saint Laurent Black Opium, so there you go. Um, so that one is a dark opium, but it does smell really good if you like your fragrances really sweet and uh, orange blossomy and a hint almondy. And then we have Bon Voyage, which is 404 Bon Voyage. This is the Bon Bon dupe. So this has changed a little bit to, from how it was. It's maybe less thick on the, it was a thick syrupy fruit and sugar thing. I'd say the fruitiness is calmed down. It's not quite, not quite so thick and syrupy fruit. And I can smell some of the base notes coming through. So um, a hint of maybe ambroxin or cedarwood or something like that. But still mega strong. It's still pretty strong on the fruity, sweetness but not as strong not as thick as it was if that makes sense wow this <laughs> speed sniffing going on here uh this one is called golden i have to be honest i don't really like this one very much um it's hard to hard to explain it might be just that it's a bit masculine um woody Slightly green, very dry. I think when fragrances are very dry, I don't enjoy them too much. Uh, Rosa Salas, you're doing amazingly well. Thank you. Um, yeah, this one, 
is it vetiver is it is it cedar is it oak moss it's kind of green dry woodsy so not my style but not necessarily not i'm not saying it's bad it's just not my style and i am really 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 fussy so that's golden and then finally then we have the one that's called patch orient from so this is one of their private line ones as well and i don't like it yeah i still get that same feeling of um mustiness musty john it's a bit like watching aaron terrence hughes tonight with your nose claire <laughs> i'll start doing more hand gestures it's a bit of musty <laughs> yeah i'm really sorry rosa salas i really don't like that one patch orient um it's almost like you know, a mattress left outside a house for a while that's got damp and then left to sort of dry and never quite get dry so <laughs> sorry if that's um if that's a bit offensive but um i have to say how it smells <laughs> in uh, the the only way i can you know um yeah i i, I don't like that i think it's, it's a bit of honey is there a bit of honey in there it is coming off almost um almost urine like so it's urine like damp musty but with a bit of honey and maybe some grass and something is slightly medicinal as well um uh renamed patch oud mainly patchouli and oud okay um yeah that's that's absolutely not for me uh, <laughs> And then finally, we go to the last one that I smelt, which is Fee Sauvage, the good girl one. And yeah, it's still giving me a little bit of a Jubri vibe, but it's not so much now. Um, Scott, I just wondered how you know about mattress smells left outside. Well, <laughs> I don't know. But I'm just imagining. I'm using my imagination. Yeah, so the Fee Sauvage, which is the good girl one, isn't as jubilee like as it was, but it still is giving me it's giving me slightly jubilee feels. But it's now more more white floral than jubilee. It's not really purple to start with, and now it's more it's more of a bouquet of flowers with a hint of jubilee in the background. Quite interesting, that one. It's not exactly my taste, but I don't dislike it either. So I think if, if you like, if you like a sort of bouquet of flowers type scent, with an unusual jubilee body shop twist, you may like this. Yeah, so that's all of them. <laughs> Give me a round of applause, please. <laughs> that was kind of um overwhelming that is the most things i think i've smelled in such a short space of time and i think i need to give my nose a break now i probably need to put my head out the window <laughs> oh thanks everyone <laughs> so yeah i think i'm not going to linger too long because uh, there's only a few of us and gonna i'm definitely gonna be coming back and doing some more lives not tomorrow night i'm having a break tomorrow night i'll probably be back tuesday or wednesday and or i'll come up with something fun for us to do smell whatever i hope that you're all doing okay that you're staying safe and your friends and family are okay and being looked after where's the salas Seriously, I'm impressed with how many fragrances you can smell simultaneously. Thank you. And Heather says, well done, Claire. So I hope that you're all doing well and it's good to see so many familiar faces. And I wish you all a good night or afternoon or whatever it is, wherever you are. Sleep well and I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.